Hi folks, and welcome to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Raymond Plourd, and on today's show, we're in beautiful northern New Brunswick on the Restigouche River at Glen Eden Lodge. The Restigouche River is world famous for its exceptionally large Atlantic salmon, one of the top five big salmon rivers in North America. Today's show, we're gonna talk about tackle, techniques, flies, and hopefully we'll learn how to play and land a really big Atlantic salmon. It's gonna be a great show, stay tuned. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of New Brunswick Tourism, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Islander Precision Reels, Rail Riders Outdoor Clothing, the toughest clothes on the planet, Net Staff, the world's first wading staff and net, Scientific Anglers. On today's show, we're headed deep into the heart of the Northern Appalachian Mountain Range in Northern New Brunswick. Our destination, Glen Eden Lodge on the banks of the world famous Restigouche River, only an hour's drive from the Canada-US border in Northeast Maine. The Restigouche is one of the top five big salmon rivers in North America. It's hosted presidents and prime ministers, Hollywood celebrities, and North America's business titans for well over a hundred years. And it's no wonder the river's pristine natural environment, stunning beauty, and large salmon make it a very special place indeed. Until very recently, the river has been almost completely privately owned and effectively off limits to all but the most privileged few who could afford to lease or own the private water rights. Only in the last few years have a couple of private properties changed hands and become full-service commercial lodges. Finally, the storied waters of the famous Restigouche are now available to the public. With a mile of prime private water containing six named pools and several good runs, Glen Eden Lodge is well situated in the mid-river section, just downstream from the famous Million Dollar Pool. The lodge itself is an authentic turn-of-the-century sportsman's lodge in the grand old style, located mid-river in a section known as England Flats. It's mid-June, and the fish have just come in from their sea feeding period and are now ascending the river towards their spawning grounds, which they will use in the late fall. Every salmon river is home to its own distinct family or tribe of salmon which often display their own unique genetic characteristics. One of those is size. And on this river, they can grow to record-breaking proportions with fish of over 50 and even 60 pounds taken in historic and even modern times. 30 plus pound fish are not at all uncommon here. Although there are also lots of smaller year classes, unlike their five Pacific cousins, Atlantic salmon don't die after spawning and will return to the sea, grow larger, and then return to spawn a second or even third time. The really big fish are most likely repeat spawners, and knowing that they can be out there makes for some very exciting angling. In fact, I could barely sleep the night before. Fishing on big, deep rivers like the Restigouche is generally done using big boats. In this case, locally made 26-foot freighter-style canoes, which are used both to reach the river's big pools and also to fish them. 
Fishing is done using a series of drops down the length of the pool. Anchoring the canoe at the top of the pool, the angler fishes out to their maximum casting range, then the guide hauls up the anchor, drifts down a short distance, drops the anchor again, and the process is repeated again. Excellent wading water is also available along numerous shallow runs and gravel bars where fish will pause before continuing up the river to the next major pool. Today I'm fishing with Glen Eden's head guide and camp manager Vaughn Firth who's guided here for over 30 years. I've been working and guiding on the Restigus River for approximately 30 years. My dad worked on the river for many years. His dad worked, plus my dad's brothers guided and worked on the river for many, many years. It's sort of a tradition to fish the river, and you gotta love it, because it's a real joy to be out there fishing on the river. Well, we're able to accommodate uh, any angler from beginner to expert fisherman, because we fish out of a 26-foot canoe, which for beginners is a little bit easier because you don't need a long line. Majority of your fish are hooked on 10 to 15 feet of line out of the boat anyways, so, and for the experts, they can wade fish or fish in the boat, whatever, whatever they like to do. Right in there. Not quite, a little bit further, right there. There you go, you take it? Nope. nope. Oh, there yes. he goes. You're on. He's got it now, and that's a good sized fish. That's a nice fish. That's what we're looking for on the rest of this. Drop her where you want. Can you get out there? I can get out Vaughn yet, do you okay. want me out now? Yeah, sure. Oh, it's nice to be in the water. The canoe gives you a lot of advantage, but uh, it's nice to be in the water. If you can bring the net, Vaughn, we uh, can make our first attempt. Okay, Vaughn, let's try. Yes, beautiful. Oh, look, he's still strong, still fighting. Sorry. Yeah, he's out. Okay. He's Is it out? Yeah. Good. What a beautiful fish. Let's uh, let's get him in the water. Hold him up into the current. Oh, and he's away. Nicely done, sir. That was terrific. What a team. <laughs> Magnificent ocean vistas and miles of warm sandy beaches make northern New Brunswick a major tourism destination. The lure of the rivers and the great north woods also make it a major destination for adventure seekers. Hiking, camping, birding, canoeing, kayaking, hunting, fishing, mountain biking, and the list goes on and on. Truly an outdoorsman's paradise. And you know you're in salmon country when the local town features a gigantic metal sculpture of a leaping Atlantic salmon. This is Restigouche Sam, located along Salmon Boulevard here in Camelton, New Brunswick. This picturesque town, the largest in the region, is located at the mouth of the mighty Restigouche River where it meets the lovely Bay of Chaleur, just across the river from Gaspé, Quebec. Folks here sure do love their salmon. The exclusivity of the Restigouche River being one of the oldest club-owned rivers uh, around the world, uh, starting in the late 1800s, is why the river is partly famous. But the true reason is the big Restigouche salmon. That's why people come here. That's why they keep coming back, is to hook that big fish that they can't get everywhere else. They don't call this the land of the giants for nothing. The way we came to own this place, uh, my brother and I have been looking for a fishing property for the last year and a half. And initially we were looking on the Miramichi, which is a, a great river. Uh, we never thought anything would come available on the uh, Restigouche. When uh, we realized this came available, we jumped on top of it as fast as we could once we saw the property because of the sheer beauty and the exclusivity of the river. We saw a good opportunity to be able to uh, open this up to the general public where uh, initially, the Restigouche River is all private clubs, and where ours will be open to the general public uh, to be able to book a three-day, four-day, or seven-day uh, excursion. Uh, it's extremely difficult unless you're uh, a member of one of the private clubs on the river, or you know somebody who's a, a member of one of the clubs, 
to be able to have the chance to fish this uh, beautiful river and to catch one of the big uh, famous uh, rescue goose salmon. Oh, we've got the most amazing staff here at Glen Eden Lodge with years and years of experience. Our head guide has been on the river for over 30 years. Our kitchen staff cooks the most amazing homemade desserts and, and dishes that you've ever tasted. And uh, they feel, make you feel so welcome here, just like you're at home. A typical day for uh, one, of the, one of the anglers that stay at Glen Eden Lodge would be to wake up to a fabulous breakfast in the morning, uh, start their fishing time around 9 a.m., fish for three to four hours, and uh, just in time for a big meal around uh, 1.30, where they'll have, enjoy lobster or steak, uh, homemade desserts, and uh, rest for the afternoon, play some horseshoes, read a book, uh, enjoy the river. Uh, then in the evening, they'll start their fish around 6 o'clock, uh, fish for three hours. Uh, at the end of the evening, they'll enjoy homemade chowders, chilies, uh, desserts again, uh, and then enjoy a cocktail in front of the uh, big stone fireplace. We got one on. Oh, beautiful. What a take. I think it might be just a grill, but what a take. Right here in front of us. Get a look of them. Have a look. Yeah, I'd say that's a grill. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Is it okay to get out of the boat, Vaughn? Sure, go ahead. Okay. You've got the tailing glove? Yep. Oh, jeez. <laughs> He's strong. There you go, Vaughn. Yeah. Sweet. Nice. OK. Let's just pop that fly out as quickly as we can. Here, open up. Oh, what a beautiful little fish. And there he goes, strong. Good job. Excellent, Vaughn. That double really worked. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, you know what you're talking about, buddy. <laughs> All right, let's go get his big brother. And there he is, on. Oh, and this is no grills, ladies and gentlemen. This is no grills. There he goes. <laughs> oh, feisty. OK, go ahead. Yeah, should be good. You want to come with me? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go with you. See if we can bring him towards us. There we go. Nicely salmon. done. Nice salmon. Oh, that's no grills. No salmon. 10-pound salmon. Look at that, baby. Summer solstice salmon. Now that's the real deal. So we're here on the Restigouche River in the early part of the season. It's mid-June and the water is still quite cold. Dry flies will come into play later in the season. Right now, the most productive way of fishing for Atlantic salmon is with a wet fly. Atlantic salmon fishing is generally done with a wet fly on a tight line. You, you want to cast about 45 degrees to the current, not upstream, halfway, or even above and not directly downstream, but at a 45 degree angle to the current and let it swing on a tight line. The speed of the fly seems to be the critical element in getting an Atlantic salmon to come and take your fly. In a fast flow, you may want to make an upstream mend after you've made the 45 degree cast so that it swings by not too fast. In slower current, you may make a downstream bend, which creates a bit of a belly on the line, so it comes across a little faster. You're looking for that critical speed. Your guy can help you identify that. After a while, it will become uh, a matter of feeling. You'll sort of just get that ideal speed. 
Every river has its own special flies, and if there's one fly that is synonymous with the Restigouche, it is the Rusty Rat, invented back in 1949 by New Brunswick fly-tying legend Jean Clovis Arsenault, the Rusty Rat has been a top producer on this river ever since. This hair-wing wet fly is a true Canadian classic. Its popularity eventually inspired other tires to adapt the design for use on other rivers. Today, there's an entire family of flies called the Rat Series, and they continue to entice salmon and trout worldwide. It's as popular today as it was back then, for the simple reason that it really works. So naturally, we had to give it a go. The gray foxtail wing makes the rusty rat, and in fact all the rat series of flies, highly visible, allowing both the fish and the angler to see the fly as it swings through the water. There he goes. Oh, I saw it. Did you, you see him? that take? Wicked. <laughs> what a beauty. <sighs> and he's off, he threw the hook. Oh. Folks, sometimes that happens. That was a pretty good hook set, it was a wonderful take. Unfortunately, he popped off the hook, it happens. Well, this is something exciting. We've had a fish grab the fly and come off quickly. We seem to be doing that very well this, um, this morning. We've had that happen to us three times. And then, just letting the fly dangle in the water while we recover from, oh, we've lost him. Another fish, or perhaps even the same fish, grabbed at it again, didn't, didn't actually tighten up. We've just made one cast quite a bit higher, and there was another big swirl followed by another big swirl. So they're following the fly around. Could be one fish, could be multiple fish. There he is. You're on. There. There he is. You're on. <laughs> This time behind the boat. Just let him. Gone? He's off. Ah, oh, the divine madness of salmon fishing. week's show really couldn't be much simpler. We're using nine foot, nine weight rods, floating lines, and large arbor reels, which have come in very handy on some of the big fish we've hooked. And because of the size of the fish, we're using 12 pound test level monofilament. That is to say, it's not tapered whatsoever. Vaughn wanted to make sure that we had that extra hooking and holding power if we got a big fish. That's the setup. It's pretty straightforward and it works. Flies we've used on today's show include the famous Rusty Rat, the Black Rat, the classic Green Highlander, the Undertaker, and Black Dose. One of the most productive flies that we're using here on the Restigouche River this week has been the Green Machine. This fly is actually a member of the Bomber family invented in the 1960s by Reverend Elmer Smith here in New Brunswick. These flies are familiar to a lot of anglers for both trout and salmon, and they're floaters, they're dry flies. The wet fly version, like the green machine, are called buck bugs, and they're tied on heavier wire hooks, and they are tied slimmer in profile. In this case, for whatever reason, the green variation with brown hackle seems to be a universally popular and effective fly for Atlantic salmon. Every angler going anywhere should carry a few. So far, we'd landed some nice Atlantic salmon and lost a few, but we were still looking for our big fish. The water was perfect. We had the green machine on and confidence was high. There he is. There he is. And that's no small fish. Did he ever come nice? Oh, what a beauty. Vaughn spotted him. He's, he said, 
As I was reeling in, he followed it for about four feet and then took a splash at it without actually taking it. So we waited for a minute, let him get back into his lie. Well, I'd say we've lost half of our backing and that fish is halfway across the river and downstream. All right, well, we still have a lot of backing out there, but we're recovering some. Now, if we can just keep leading him back up here. Right well, here's a nice spot that we can get him here. So strong. He's not done yet. Unbelievable, it's strong, eh? Yes! Wicked! Oh, there's our nice fish. And he's still strong. Look at that. <laughs> what a slab! A beautiful June fresh run Atlantic salmon from the Restigush River. Oh, let's have a good look at oh, that a fish. Beauty. beauty fish. Oh, man. That's as, as fresh and as bright and as strong as, as they come. Look at that beauty. What a beautiful fish. Oh, let's put him back in the water. Oh, and there he goes. Sweet, sweet. Fish. Oh, Vaughn, that was Great wicked. Great job, man. Great job. Thanks. A land uh, of fish that size. Well, and that's the biggest fish that I've oh, ever hooked in my life. So thank you very much. 25 minute battle there. Wicked. Wicked. Yep. Yeah, really. Um, folks, uh, the rest of Gush River has only recently become available for traveling anglers. I can't recommend it enough. Glen Eden Lodge, fabulous place to stay, wonderful staff. They know their business. Folks, for more details on this episode and others in our series, please visit us on the web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of New Brunswick Tourism, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Islander Precision Reels, Rail Riders Outdoor Clothing, the toughest clothes on the planet, Net Staff, the world's first wading staff and net, Scientific Anglers. To learn more about the New Fly Fisher, our locations, contests, news, and much more, come visit and like us on Facebook.